Previously on Master Chef, please welcome Chelsea Murphy. Your challenge is to elevate stadium food. Bryn, you're going down the lobster route. For sure. Make sure it tastes good. Flag goes to Jennifer. Five minutes time out. Stand still. I'm gonna go for king crab hush puppies. One of the most expensive crab meats. Hoping it pays off tonight. Not stopping me here today. Jen, it's delicious. I love it. A very professional creation. It's flawless. Congratulations. Bryn. Thank you. This is huge. And these are totally raw. It definitely tastes better than it looks. This is raw. You can't believe you even eat this. The person leaving MasterChef is Lizzie. Love you, Lizzie. I love you guys so much. Tonight, the top nine face off in a smoking hot challenge. Woo! You have to cook a restaurant quality barbecue plate. Bryn, you get to pick one cook to be safe from elimination tonight. All right. Let's go. Get your proteins on. Holy You realize how close the finale is, right? I didn't think I'd make it past additions. This is not happening. You know what you're doing over there? Stop, she's grilling oysters. Whoop. You played the grill like a piano. Talk about presentation, this is like, boom! That sauce completely got lost. It's totally amateurish. Man, this is one of my favorite dates. It's exciting to take them outside of the MasterChef kitchen into this incredible outdoor barbecue. Come on. It's grilling time. Oh, wow. We are grilling today. Oh, All yes. right, let's go. I'm so excited to see these grills out on the patio. I grill all the time for my wife and my son back in Iowa. It's one of our favorite things to do during those Iowa summers. And like, I couldn't be more at home with these grills in front of me. Woo! Good to see you all. Top nine. I'm coming off two challenges when I was in the bottom, and so I really have to be able to show off to them today and show them that I do know what to do in front of this grill. Right, all of you, welcome to your MasterChef patio. Come on, how cool does this look? Yeah. Wow. Kennedy, how are you feeling? I feel great. Um, I'm super excited to be grilling. I'm a camper girl. So you're at home, right? I'm right at home, baby. I love it. Love that. Uh, Bryn, you won last time round, so you have the immunity pin. I'm excited about it. Well, here's the good news. You don't have to cook today. Thank you. And take a look at that beautiful chair over there. <laughs> take a seat and sit back, relax, and enjoy the California sunshine, Bryn. Thank you. Slay, queen. Now, all of you, your challenge today is to make an elevated version of a dish you'd find at any summer barbecue back home. Today, we want to see that elevated, restaurant quality barbecue plate. And the good news is you're going to be using these state-of-the-art Viking grills. Now, they get up to 500 degrees. Ooh. But in case you guys haven't done the math yet, there are eight of you who are supposed to cook today, and there are only seven grills. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Now, Bryn, you get to pick one tremendous cook today to join you and sit and contemplate the strategy going into the top eight of this competition. <laughs> All right. That's, that's game. Crazy. Oh, that's, wow. That's game changer. Okay. <laughs> I think as we get this close to the end, saving someone who I see as a top dog who's been outstanding just isn't the smart thing to do because this might be a chance for them to slip up. This is my one shot to use an advantage for myself and to knock out these other incredible chefs. Now, Bryn, this is a massive decision, let me tell you, because starting today, there is no more immunity pin. As we approach the finale, there's no more room for free passes. We want to see what you're all made of. Man. So, Bryn, tough decision. Who is joining you into the top eight? Reagan. Wow. Hey. Reagan, go and join Bryn. Take a seat. Wow. Right, yes, ma'am. Woo! Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Reagan, what a lovely surprise. Congratulations. This is top eight. <laughs> Bren knows that I have been kind of in the middle, and so I think I'm not a threat to her. But at the same time, to make it into that top eight, I'm so honored to have this immunity right now. My girl got me. I appreciate it. <laughs> OK, guys, you will have one hour to grill us an amazing, elevated backyard barbecue dish. Now, today, We'll be tasting all seven dishes. And whoever grills the best dish will 
earn an incredible advantage across the next challenge. And sadly, whoever cooks the worst dish today will be leaving the competition for good. Right, everybody ready? Yes, chef. chef. Your one hour starts now. Good luck. Woo! Come on. Good luck. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Let's go. I can't reach things. Oh, mercy. Take both of them. Oh, my God. Knowing I have to make a MasterChef level dish on the grill today is making me feel a mix of emotions. On one hand, I'm excited. I grew up with my dad grilling every week. But in terms of actually doing the grill myself, I'm definitely not as experienced as now. But I'm ready to give it all I got today. I'm making an Alabama-style surf and turf. My dad is from down on the Gulf Coast of Alabama, so whenever we go down there to visit family, we're always getting that good seafood. So I'm grabbing that New York strip, some oysters, and some fresh lump crab meat. Gotta show them that Gulf Coast flavor, right? And we're looking good here. Congratulations. Congratulations to, Congratulations to you. Top to you. <laughs> <laughs> to the top eight. Ooh. So, 60 minutes to create a stunning summer barbecue dish. Elevated, right? You are right, Chef. I'm really going to reward the home cooks that use the grill to their advantage. Yes. And multiple elements. Yes. I think that's going to go really far with me. First and foremost important, the rub, the marinade, right? Oh, yeah, you have to go with big, bold flavors when you're working with the grill, because you don't want your flavor profiles to be muted by the impact of the high heat grill. Get my rub on here. Nah, whatever rub she's got on it, it looks good. <laughs> This has to be the most relatable challenge so far, yeah, because yeah. there's not a region anywhere in this great country that doesn't grill. Yeah. The clock. Jen, what do you need, darling? The clock. The clock. The clock. Ten minutes gone. Thank you. Guys, just over ten minutes gone. Just under 50 minutes to go. OK, we're good, we're good. I feel like I want it even smaller. You know, grilling is pretty big in my family, and my dad is the grill master. So that's where we get to do our bonding time. We definitely love to grill together. He's not much of a chef in the kitchen, but outside on that grill, he's the man. I've definitely learned a lot from him, so I'm ready to show what I learned. I'm grilling a filet, and I'm gonna use some shrimp to make that a little bit of a surf and turf. You know, you can overcook the steak, so I'm gonna marinate that and cook it toward the end to make sure that it gets that flavor in there and make sure that I don't overcook it. Okay, so I'm seeing like a lot of surf and turf, actually. A lot of surf and turf. Well, which is wild. Yeah. I'm gonna grill these, because oh, they're pretty. Tonight I'm making red snapper as well as shrimp. Hopefully we, we get this done right. I think MD's going all Jeez. surf, no turf. I don't know if I should grill it with the shell. I'm an island girl, and I actually grew up cooking with fire, so I have to make sure that this fish is cooked perfectly, or that would be so embarrassing. Let's see, what does this do? Um, Viking grill is really fancy for me. Like, I'm not very good with buttons. <laughs> I'm just a little bit uncomfortable because I just don't really know how to control the heat cut as well as I normally do cooking with the real fire or real coals. Um, so I'm really stressed out right now. Holy <laughs> this is hot. Potatoes going. This is cooking fast as hell. Let's see if I can melt this butter a little bit. Guys, 15 minutes gone, 45 minutes to go. Get your proteins on and let them rest, please. Okay, now I need lime juice. Today I'm making a chipotle rubbed uh, New York strip steak. I call it surf and turf. Mexicana. Um, I know that sounds strange coming from the Midwest, but let me tell you, it is our number one ethnic food, so I'm gonna elevate it today. I love that there's no more immunity, honestly. It makes everybody have to cook and not hide up there. But you need to get that steak on there pretty soon there, homeboy. It's thin. It's gonna cook super fast, but thank you for your concern. No problem. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Through the years of MasterChef, grilling in the MasterChef Terrace has been a real high point for me. I love to come out here, love to get the grills going, yeah. and love to get out of the MasterChef kitchen with this type of cuisine. Yeah, right. 20 minutes gone, just under 40 minutes to go. Right, Jennifer, how are you feeling? Hi, Chef. You know what? 
Um, I'm feeling nervous. Uh, my husband has been the grill master for our entire marriage, so this is one of the things that I'm still very new at. But I will say, every time that we get through another challenge and I'm either top or I'm, you know, moving forward, I just get more excited and more determined. You realize how close the finale is, right? Yes, I so know. So it's anyone's game right now. It, um, it really is. Tell me about the dish, what you're doing, what's the rub, how does it relate to yes. the south? Yes, you are going to love my rub here. So I have a, a Memphis rub that has some herbs and also has some spice to it as well. Right. So it's a dry and, rub? Yes, it is a dry rub. And you've got a double cut. Uh-huh, yes. Pork. Yeah, so my worry is is making sure that that gets cooked all the way through. I'm also making southern style grilled mushrooms and grilled baby gems as well. Sounds delicious. Yes, I think the the flavor profile all together I think and yeah. I hope you will absolutely love. Love that. Make sure you can baste this and brush it as well. Okay, okay? because yes. you're going to sear it beautifully, but yes. it needs to rest, but okay. also as it cooks you need okay. to baste it because okay. it goes dry very quickly. Okay. Yes. Let it rest. Good okay. luck. Thank Sounds you, delicious. Chef. I feel a lot of pressure to do my absolute best today because I want to be in the top eight. But there are so many talented cooks here, like Kennedy or Wayne or Colby, who've been grilling a lot longer. And so this is certainly a, a tough challenge. <sighs> Woo, Lord have mercy. So a lot of blenders on a patio and not a single pina colada. I mean, <laughs> what are we here for, guys? What are we here for? Kennedy. Hello. Hi. Talk to us a little bit about the dish. You got a lot going on. I do got a lot going on. Um, so in, in Colorado, we don't really do barbecues. We do campfires. So I'm doing a coffee rubbed elk tenderloin. Can we see it? Yeah, of course. It's in here. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm smoking it right now, and I got a nice coffee rub going Look, on. Look, you won your apron on an elk dish. I sure did. So, based on your earlier performance with elk, then, you're going to set the bar very high today. Yeah. You have to exceed that. Absolutely, and it's definitely a risk. But um, I took your feedback from last time and that um, it definitely just needed, like, a fat to lay on, so I made, like, a beautiful carrot puree. I have a bourbon sauce that's going with it, too, so I feel like um, I just like standing out and being unique in my flavors. Um, I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. Good luck. Okay. Thank you, guys. Sab, don't wait too long and open those oysters, because they are tough. I'm going to open them on the grill. Oh. Let them go pop. Like Let them pop was... themselves? OK. That Great is a idea. really good idea. Beautiful. Right, so big man, how are you feeling? Sure. I'm great. You good? Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Give us an insight to the dish. So this is a dish that I'm trying to do that's really what turned me on to pork. The first time I ever really enjoyed a pork chop was at my grandmother's house, my Italian grandmother's right. house. She still grilled it, but she cooked it in a red sauce. And so I'm trying to elevate that a little bit today. Bring some sweetness to the party. Love that. Some beautiful andouille there for some smokiness. Love that idea. It's authentic. It's, it means a lot to you. Okay. Absolutely. And where's the marinade? Where's the brush? Where are you going to go with this in terms of as it cooks? This is what I'm going to use on it, actually. Right. And you may want to put a bit of oil on there first before you put that on there, because that's not really a base, is it? Sure. No, 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 no. OK. Because that's a sauce. So and oil I, I, on I understand there. that, because you want to finish it with that. Yes. Otherwise, that may turn the meat gray. OK. Surprisingly, you've been in the bottom in the last two weeks. I think I got a little too big for my britches there. I, uh, I was trying to do too many cute things that I thought I could pull off that maybe I just was not successful at. So this is going back to my roots. Dish sounds amazing. Don't leave it too late to that thing. No, absolutely not. The cigarette that thing is in the resting as well. Okay. Absolutely. Good luck. Absolutely. Come on. Appreciate you. Perfect. OK. It is pretty. Ooh. MD's got the banana leaves out. Oh, yeah. Colby. Hey, yes, sir. What's going on, chef? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. You know, I'm coming off of last week feeling that I was a little down about it just because I know I messed but, up. But, but you, you, you beat yourself funny. up too much. Hey. Yes, sir. Way too much. That's gone. How are you going to elevate it? And um, what's the dish? Yes, sir. So I'm going to do a filet. And I'm going to use some shrimp to make that a bit of a surf and turf with a sweet potato casserole. I'm going to bake it in the grill. Good. And then I'm going to do something like a corn rib since I can't make regular ribs, just a little corn rib. You've got a double-edged sword tonight with the filet mignon, because there's no excuses for that. If you're going to grill that thing, it needs to be perfect. Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. And then the shrimp. You're marinating the shrimp as I'm well? I'm marinating the shrimp with, um, I have a Texas rub here that I created. Big, bold flavor. So that's what I'm going for. Good Thank luck. you. Good luck. What's Colby got there? What's that, nuts? Walnuts. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm making a sweet potato, sweet potato casserole, casserole with a walnut and brown sugar topping. Come on, now. I am excited to see how those look. Some great dishes going out there. Some of them look good. So uh, Jennifer, she's doing a dish that her husband has cooked many times, and she's doing a, a beautiful marinated double pork chop. Here's a Jeopardy. It's a double cut pork chop. Yeah. And so when you start grilling this thing, it doesn't cook it. It just marks it. Exactly. And so she has to find a way now on how to get that thing cooked. And it's just going well, on she, the grill. She has to use the barbecue as an oven yes, to get absolutely. that thing done properly. Also, it needs to rest for 10 or 15 minutes, so she's up against it. 
right, let me work on this baby more. So Kennedy brought us back with the dish that won her an apron. She's okay. doing grilled elk. She nailed the grilled elk the first time they got her the apron. The bar is going to be super high. She cannot make a mistake today. That's probably one of the most tempestuous proteins out there. No fat, needs constant nurturing, and you can't leave this thing on the grill for any longer than two or three minutes. You overcook it, and you, you won't even eat it. It's gone. It's jerky. Woo! I don't even need this. What am I doing? Ooh, I love a corn rib. Those are so fun and pretty. Colby, so he's come for a surf and turf. He's taking a filet and huge jumbo shrimp. Big risk with a filet. I'm concerned about the lack of fat. Yeah, yeah. There's nowhere to hide. Yeah. So if you can pull it off, the dish sounds amazing. Yep. 22 minutes to go. Come on. Whew. No way. Yeah, this is not happening. What temperature is it supposed to be? Uh, how does it feel? I don't know. Looks a little soft. Do, do your finger. She looks a little soft still. Yeah. I started off strong, but right now, if my proteins don't come out perfectly, I'm afraid Gordon's going to believe that I'm just this bottom chef that I was last week. You want to kind of steak and cook on a grill. I do not want to be in the bottom again. I cannot get eliminated. And one thing's for sure, I'm not going home on a grilling challenge. You got it. Yeah, you got this. Oh, my god. I cannot tell. Almost there. <laughs> Those shrimp look beautiful. Y'all only got 20 minutes 20 left, y'all. Minutes. 20 minutes to go, guys. Ready? Let's go. Surf. Hi, Chef. How are Hi, you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm pretty excited. I'm giving you a little surf and turf today. Love that. What's the surf? The surf is a uh, New York strip. Is surf is a grilled steak. <laughs> Have you been drinking? <laughs> I wish. The, the surf is the, the sea. The, the, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forget. <laughs> the surf is char grilled oysters, and the turf is a whiskey marinade in New York strip. And then we got some Pontchartrain sauce that I'm working on here with the crab. Nice, that's finishing the crab. Love that. So, and so to get those oysters open, that grill needs yes. to be so hot. Absolutely. Yes. Otherwise, they'll become rubber. Absolutely. Um, top eight looming. Yes, chef. How are you feeling? Woo! I can't believe I'm here. I, I mean, I didn't think I'd make it past additions. Really? Yes, yeah, chef. It's some incredibly talented people here, mm -hmm. you know, and it's hard to see myself standing up against everybody here. You deserve to be here, girl. You've got every chance to get yourself to that top eight. Focus, edit yourself, taste everything before you put it on a plate. Yes, yeah, chef. Yeah, oh, good luck. Sounds Thank amazing. You. Good Thank luck. Thank you so much. Let's go, Sab. How about that affirmation, huh? That was so sweet. Let's you got go. this. You got this. You got this. We're almost there. Wayne, how we doing, buddy? Doing good. I'm doing uh, Surf and Turf Mexicana. You got the jumbo prawn. They're marinating a bunch of great spices. I've got my steak on right now. What steak that, did you use? What cut? I got the New York Strip, and it's a uh, chipotle. Yeah, it's a chipotle rub. Just chipotle one. rub New York Strip? Yep. Don't move it till you're ready? Perfect. Great wow. timing. What else are you going to put on the plate? Oh, I got a spicy Mexican rice going. Uh, certainly, the Mexican roots to taking the grill and elevating is an interesting strategy, wouldn't you say, Aaron? Yeah, absolutely, because we have the chilies, we have a lot of citrus, we have flavors that are very amenable to high heat and also sort of aggressive cooking styles, which the grill allows you to do. And the fact that you're stepping out of the comfort zone and going Mexicana, I really appreciate that. And I think that's what it's all about. Can you execute is the question. We're about to find out. Those shrimp, you're going to put them on the last minute? Yes. They'll probably take, like, what, three minutes? Yeah, they're not going to take too long, so. Good yep. luck, Wayne. Thanks, guys. Hello, Chef. Hello, Hello Chef. What do you got going on? Well, What's the protein? What's the star? Uh, I'm making a red snapper wrapped in banana leaves, also grilled shrimp. Can we see? Uh, yeah. So do you have a marinade on the snapper, though? Well, not quite a marinade. Um, it's got coconut. So normally when you do a wrapped banana fish or anything like that, it has to have something strong. Acidity. Yes, yeah, acidity yeah. is so important. Yeah. Careful. Those shrimp might be cooked. Yeah. I'm going to finish it actually in the sauce so it's more flavorful. So really, is it something that you do often? Because I know that you're known for your confections and your donuts, but... Yeah, I actually, I grew up, there was no electricity where I grew up, mm. so we actually cooked in fire. I had to make fire three times a day just to make our meals. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, this is too fancy for me. I'm learning to use proper equipment. 
Absolutely. Yeah. What is that? So this is called palapa. Palapa is a, almost like a curry that's popular in Mindanao, which is the southern part of the Philippines where my mother is from. Look, can yes, I just yeah. tell you something? This looks yeah. all really interesting and really you're pushing the limits. Yes. My concern here for you is there's no shrimp already thoroughly cooked. So yeah. please be careful and yeah, don't I'm, overcook I'll turn off the heat. Good luck. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. When I was a kid, my mom would cook my lunches wrapped in banana leaves and send me off to school with it. So I just miss that flavor, that aroma in food. I'm happy that I get to represent my culture and my home. And hopefully this is elevated enough for the judges. I like it. How we doing, Colby? You doing okay? I'm good, I'm good. I'm so excited. Oh. Jen, I love a grilled salad. Me too. Love you, ladies. <laughs> Welcome to the Brandon Reagan Show. Welcome to the Brandon Reagan Good Show. show. <laughs> Y'all so cute. You are. Welcome to the Brandon Ow, Reagan, Reagan show. show. I love it. I would watch yeah. with our guest today. With our guest today. Sup. Sup. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> guys, 50 minutes gone. We're down to our last 10 minutes. 10 minutes to go, guys. Make sure those proteins are rested. Don't slice too early if you are slicing them. It's good. Maybe a little more salt, but it's what it's supposed to taste like. Now, Sarah's doing a whiskey marinated New York strip, mm. and she's going to serve that like a surf and turf with grilled oysters. And she's, wait, wait, stop. She's grilling oysters? She's going to grill. Oh, you put them on the grill and you steam and them, open. my friend, and, and they open. They, they that open. is not grilling. Yeah, no, no, that no, is like putting them in the oven. It's a technique. You know, traditionally in New Orleans, you would put a compound butter yes, that's right. into the actual oyster shell as it steams faux yep. grills, yeah. to your point. And her sauce is following uh, the lake. Uh, Lake Pontchartrain, which is oh. a, a white sauce finished with crab. Yep. So this dish sounds incredible. She pulls it off. Oh, yes, I get it. Ooh. I think that's right. <laughs> Girl, they are looking yeah, good. they're looking so good. MD is doing a banana leaf wrapped red snapper with grilled shrimp in some sort of a Filipino sauce. Yeah. I was a little bit concerned because the shrimps were already grilled and cooked, and she put them back into the sauce to cook more, yeah. and I didn't see the snapper in the banana right. leaf. Very was ambitious. It, was it marinated before it went into the banana leaf? She said just coconut milk hopefully doesn't fall flat with flavor. I appreciate the cultural spin with the banana leaves, but this is a grill challenge. She should be grilling the fish, not steaming it. She's probably doing the most complex preparation. I sure. hope it pays off. Spicy. It's probably a little too spicy. I'm gonna add more coconut. Guys, just under five minutes to go. All right, baby, cook shrimp, cook shrimp. I'm really concerned about Grant's pork chop. It might have overcooked in that hot grill. Done, done, done. It's gotta be done. Taste, 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 everyone. Lemon juice, that's what I'm missing. I knew I was missing something. Seasoning, resting. Come on, y'all, you can do this. <sighs> this is hard. Oh my God. That is overcooked. A little bit of salt. 90 seconds to go, come on. Okay, okay, okay. Plate with finesse, uh, Master Chef restaurant quality. Yes, Chef. We got it, we got it. There, baby. Ah! Oh God. Okay, should I get that? I get that. Let's go. Ten, Ten nine, nine. Oh my God. Eight, eight seven, shoot. six, quick, Jennifer. Five, four, three, oh my gosh. two, one. Oh, let's Stop. say hands in the air. Yeah, well done. Good job. All right. Oh, that was fun. Colby. Baby. They say it takes this, so I had to give them a lot. You got You four. gave it. Okay. You have seafood Jenga over there. How is it, Sab? I like it. I'm happy with it. I think my dad would be proud. Yes. yes. How's the dish turn out? I don't know. You're not going to get much out of me right now. I don't know. I'm pretty. I'm annoyed. Thank you. I'm pissed. I mean, I know how to cook elk, and I definitely overcooked it. And that's, that's my main component, which the judges are going to notice. So I definitely messed up. All of you, well done, seriously. Watching how you really embrace the grill has been impressive. Since there's only seven of you cooking, Joe, Ron, and myself are going to taste all of your dishes today. Whoever cooks the best dish will earn a big, big advantage across the next challenge. Sadly, if you've cooked one of the worst dishes, it could mean the end of your MasterChef dream.
Right, the first dish we'd like to taste is from Grant. Go, Grant. I'm taking a real risk in grilling Italian food, but I'm hoping the judges, especially Joe, look down and see where I was coming from today. And I can bounce back from not just one, but two bad cooks in a row, and I can show them, hey, I still can do this. I have what it takes to be the next master chef. Grant, please tell us the dish. I made double cut pork chops with a spicy tomato sauce with balsamic glaze, chard, broccolini over herb polenta. When I think Italian food, I don't necessarily think of the grill, nope. right? <laughs> Absolutely. So the fact that you were, you know, hell bent on doing that, I, I think says a lot about you. Thank you, chef. All right, let's see what the cook's like here. What's the cook on there? What have you gone for? Medium pink. Wow, it looks good. Nice and pink. Let's give it a try. That uh, pork's cooked beautifully. I mean, it's just absolutely nailed. And that's really hard, that. I can taste how desperate you are to win this competition in this dish. Just edit yourself. I think this dish could do without the polenta. Okay. Because you've got such protein within that sauce and the blistering of the tomatoes. And so that was the liquid. That's all it needed. Sure. I disagree. I love the polenta. I love the seasoning on the outside of the pork. Everything's spot on. Thank you, Chef. This is a um, in-your-face, full-flavored dish. Pork chop is cooked very well. It's quite Quite good. Great job. Thank you, Chef. Next up, uh, Kennedy, please. Thank you. I'm annoyed right now. My dish does not look how I want it to look. Um, my elk is definitely overcooked, and it would kill me to go home over this dish. Kennedy, describe the dish. I made a coffee rubbed elk tenderloin with a mushroom medley and a carrot puree. I can see that there's some problems with the cook on the elk. When it gets grayish like that, it destroys the flavor of it. And I'm not really quite sure about the plating on this carrot puree. It's totally, totally amateurish. Shall we? Yes. Yep. Yeah, it is the thing. We've come to admire you, and you've been such a, an outstanding, consistent individual. I think it's one of your most lackluster dishes in the competition because it's lost the excitement of the grill. It's just sort of all aesthetic, but it doesn't work comprehensively. For me, that sauce completely got lost. Yeah. I, I can't even pick up any of those flavors there, and that's disappointing. Yeah, I understand, Chef. Yeah, so the overcooking of the elk really kind of makes it taste mealy to me and kind of ruins the dish. Yeah. It's unfortunate because some components are good. It's just the main principal protagonist is miscooked for me, and that's a problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. The next dish that we want to taste is from MD, so please bring your dish forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Try not to trip. I've made themed red snapper wrapped in banana leaves and palapa grilled shrimp with papaya salad and grilled sweet potato. I'm not really quite sure what to say about this dish. It looks a little bit sloppy and a little bit unfocused to me. Should we dig in? Yep. It's hard to get grill flavor when you have it encased in banana leaf like that without yes. this overcooking. I grilled the ginger first and I grilled the onions before putting it in the banana leaf to get some of that smokiness inside. I suppose if you just grilled the fish, it'll be way better. Yep. Sadly, the snapper is really overcooked. The problem you got when you wrap it in a banana leaf, you got no control. And so I preferred you've done half the amount on here and done it beautifully, then deliver an underwhelming dish. This dish has a lot of problems. The red snapper is completely overcooked. The shrimp are overcooked. We talked about elevating grill, and you missed the mark. I'm going to tell you, MD, I really like the flavor of the palapa shrimp, but to Joe's point, it's overcooked. And I'm a little disappointed, to be very honest. Thank you, MD. I think we were very, very vocal about saying restaurant elevated, but, no? But why not grill the snapper? Yeah, yeah. All right, the next dish we would like to taste is from Wayne. I'm feeling a little confident and a lot anxious because the two before me had a rough time with the judges, so I definitely have to prove myself with this dish. Boy, does that add a lot of extra pressure. All right, Wayne, tell us what you got for us. 
I made a chipotle dry rubbed New York strip steak, and then I've got two citrus marinated jumbo prawns sitting on a bed of spicy Mexican rice, and I've got a salsa verde cruda. For this dish to be a top level dish, the seasoning, the cook has to be on point because you have nowhere to hide here. So let's see how it works out. All right, shall we? Yeah. So uh, what kind of a cook were you looking for on the steak? Uh, medium rare. Medium rare. So uh, what kind of a cook were you looking for on the steak? Uh, medium rare. Medium rare. Yeah. That looks perfect. All right, let's give it a try. Wayne, you really had a lot of confidence in your technique on the grill to do this dish. And I have to say you nailed it. It is perfect grilled simplicity. Thank Good you. job. Thank you. What I'm most impressed is that the fact that the marinades, you had a chance to bloom them and blossom the flavor on the grill. And right there, that, for me, is the most magical part of this dish. Wayne, I think you played the grill like a piano because mm -hmm. you've got everything done correctly. Today's challenge was a grilling challenge. And so every element on this plate has been elevated from the grill. That was the objective. I think the rice needs another 60 seconds. It's just a touch crunchy. But um, it really tastes like a grilled dish. Thank you, Chef. Well Good done. Job, Impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Man. OK, the next dish we would like to try is from Jennifer. I am so nervous. But also, I'm thankful that I had a chance to really show my skills here and try something new. Ooh la la. I am just praying that it is cooked perfectly. Jennifer, please tell us what you made. I've made a grilled double bone-in pork chop with a Memphis rub, an Alabama white barbecue sauce, a grilled sweet potato puree, and grilled baby gems and mushrooms. It looks elegant, and I think you've endeared the word grill 100% across this plate. Really good. Let's try Shall it. we? What kind of a cook are we looking for on the pork? Medium. Medium. Touch overcooked. Looks a little dry. Shall we try? Jennifer, I think the magic really in this dish is the exterior of the pork. It's well seasoned. It just has a depth of flavor that's so cool. Spot on. I love what you've done with the sauce and the lettuce and that Alabama white barbecue sauce. The thing that lets this dish down is just that puree. It just needs seasoning. Okay. It's missing a little bit of attitude, but if this dish were properly seasoned, it might be maybe one of the best dishes of the night. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, next up, Colby, please make your way down. Sure. There was a moment where I was just kind of all over the place, but I came back strong. Go, Colby. Everything looks great. I know the flavor is there, and I hope I can go and show off to my dad a little bit. Right, Colby, tell us what the dish is. I made a Texas-style surf and turf with a filet and barbecue shrimp. I also made corn ribs and a sweet potato casserole with the brown sugar and walnut topping. Talk about presentation. This is like, boom! <laughs> Very it's Texas. Like big, explosive, lots of colors. Really makes me want to eat it. Shall we? Mm -hmm. It's a perfect medium rare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a lot of flavor. It was good, though. All right, Colby, so what I love about this dish is I'm thinking about Texas, like, elevated steakhouse, mm -hmm. you know? And this yes, is what sir. this looks like to me. I love the idea of the shrimp being big and bold and standing up to the filet. I think that says a lot about your confidence. I was worried about the cook on the steak, but the steaks cook beautifully. And then you come to the baked sweet potato, and it's way too sweet. OK. <laughs> but it's a really good job. Yeah, I think the steak was perfectly cooked. Then I tasted the shrimp, and the shrimp are cooked more perfectly than the steak, if that's possible. So you really nailed the grilling of those two proteins. Yes, Great sir. job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so the final dish that we would like to taste is from Sav. Beautiful Sav. I'm really stoked about this dish. My steak looks char grilled to perfection. The crab, I got in some good brown butter. And those oysters look pretty dang good, if I do say so myself. All right, Sav, can you please describe your dish? 
I made an Alabama surf and turf, which is a whiskey steak with crab and mushrooms and brown butter and Pontchartrain sauce, wilted spinach, and char-grilled oysters. I don't know about you, but I've never seen barbecued oysters on, on a composed dish. Yeah. You have them by themselves, okay. you know? And, and, the, and the butter on the crab looks a little bit over browned. That's but, crab? Yeah. Oh, see, I thought that was mushrooms. Quite frankly, that crab is probably better off raw than what you did with it. Seb, the butter on the crab looks a little bit over browned. That's but, crab? Yeah. Oh, see, I thought that was mushrooms. Should we dig in? Yep. What kind of a cook are we looking for in the steak? I'm looking for medium rare. Chef. Medium rare. All right, let's see, what do we have? Go under. A little under? Mm -hmm. Oh dear, um, so the crab's burnt, as you can see, it's just uh, all dry. And you have to stop the butter from overcooking, otherwise it's just bitter. Um, steak slightly under, season is on point, great grill marks. Sauce, delicious. There's something quite bold and courageous about your attempts every time. It's just badly finished. I think you were being too ambitious and trying to grasp at all these different iconic elements and it's not equaling in a cohesive dish. I feel much the same way. The oysters are a categorical flop. Steaks cooked well, but a little bit under. So a um, bunch of mistakes here. Thanks, Seth. Thanks. It's okay, babe. Hold it together. It's a tough one, this one. Very tough. The challenge was the grill, so if you really didn't use the grill at all, no. then you had some problems. Yeah, I need to discern what you did on the grill as it equals to flavor. Wayne's was outstanding. Yeah, yeah, I thought uh, we did a good job. Um, Colby's was really good as well. Colby's was really good, too. Um, Jennifer's yeah. was really Jennifer's good. good. They make any decisions now. Um, all of you, well done. Even though the immunity pin is no longer in play, the winning home cook will still receive a huge game-changing advantage in the next challenge. We felt that the best dish today was cooked by... Wayne. Yes. Well done. Wayne, the dish was authentic, cooked perfectly, but great use of the grill. Thank you. Well done. Go and head over to the veranda, please. Feels amazing to know I'm in the top eight, and it never gets old being at the top. Congratulations. Good Thanks. I just keep inching closer and closer and closer to that MasterChef trophy. Right, Jennifer, Grant, Colby, you three cooked outstanding dishes. Great usage of the grill. You are safe from elimination tonight. Top eight. Top eight. <laughs> well done. Thank Head you. over to the veranda. Great job. Almost there, guys. Oh my gosh, almost there, y'all. Right, uh, that leaves you three. Sav, MD, and Kennedy, sadly, with underwhelming dishes. Uh, all three of you, make your way to the steps. Thank you. And please give us a very important minute. So, to me, it boils down to did you use the grill to your advantage? Kennedy's elk. The uh, elk was really overcooked. Mm -hmm. It kind of ruined the whole thing because that could have been a, a winning dish. Yeah. I think Seth, did it need the oysters, Joe? And secondly, no, it there was a, a bit of a mess. It's just yeah. not done. And then MD, I mean, did we get the bit, use of the grill? A bit of disaster, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no. She was trying to fit too many elements, too many influences into one dish. I don't think she listened, really. Yeah. Good luck, babies. Good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. Shall we? Yeah. This has been a really tough decision, but we're all in agreement. The home cook that will be leaving MasterChef today is... MD. Sav, Kennedy, say goodbye to MD and please join the other cooks.
MD, I love the background of the Filipino style and what you did, but sadly the red snapper was overcooked and not a great usage of the grill. MD, I think you were one of the best parts of the United Taste of America because you brought a region of the States that we don't often see. You brought it in your smile and your color and the dishes you make. Thank you for bringing the Hawaiian sunshine to MasterChef. Mahalo. Continue, please. Expand that range that you have. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well done. MD, come and say goodbye. I... I'm going to come help you <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care, Take care. You should feel very proud. You did great, oh. young lady. Thank oh, man. So Thanks. Coming for donuts. You better. I love you all. I love you, great friend. Of course, it's always disappointing to go home earlier than planned. But when I came into this competition, I wanted to show that I can cook other things other than donuts. It's time for the donut queen to leave the donuts behind and move on to restaurant quality dishes like this. Yeah. It's a yes. Four yeah. yeses. Yes. yes. So Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations goes to MD and Sav. Ah, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's eye-catching. It's captivating. They should be tears of joy, I'm hoping. I think I was doubting myself. Tonight you're in the top three, young lady. I'm so glad that I was able to represent Maui and bring color to this competition the way I have. I never lost who I am this whole time. Bye, I man. think in that way I've won. Love you, MD. Next time, the top eight face their biggest challenge yet. The wall. It's not fun. You will cook on opposite sides of this wall, but you must create dishes that taste and look identical. Tonight is a double elimination. Wayne, you get to pick the teams. Oh, hell. Can you hear me? Yeah. Say that again. Jennifer. You think she understood? Oh, my God. I don't know if I like this sauce. What? Did you put it in already? No, what? Ah! Everything that could have gone wrong, Jennifer! Did. We're in big trouble. Ah! It's gonna be okay. That tells the whole story right there. The team leaving the competition is... One potato, two potato.